Welcome to the Thick and Mystic Moment, the show that's all about uncovering the secrets of personal transformation and celebrating the incredible stories of those who've dared to change their lives. I'm your guide, Robert John Hadfield, and together we'll explore the power of change. Let's get started. As some of you know, I've done a lot of voiceover work in my life, whether it can be anything from a radio commercial to voicing some sort of corporate presentation, whatever. I've done a lot of this stuff. And sometimes it's on screen, reading a teleprompter. But not long ago, I had my first opportunity to go actually do a character where I was hired to go, you know, they give you a script here's your character, here's the character description, and you, you go be an actor, a voice actor. Never done this before. And it was, it was a lot of fun. And I, I'm a, you know, moderately talented actor, and so it was, it was a very enjoyable experience. <laughs> but it's actually, it's actually a lot harder than it, than it seems. And, you know, finding a character and then getting it the way you want it and making it, making it feel like it's actually good or that it, that it's entertaining, because that ultimately is what you're trying to do, is create an entertaining character that people will pay attention to. Anyway, I'd never done it before. It was really a lot of fun to have the opportunity to do it. And it, it, when my son and I go to a lot of uh, Comic-Con type events, and he's fascinated by these people that do voiceover work. And I have, uh, when I'm with him, he loves to go meet all these different people that do this kind of work where they actually go and do voices and they act and play characters. And so we will frequently find ourselves over in the celebrity parts of these comic cons getting autographs. And then we go meet all these different people that do this type of work. And interestingly, when you go meet these people they are some of the most fun, interesting people and, and out friendly, down to earth, humble. It's awesome meeting them. And, and maybe partly because nobody really knows who they are. I mean, you could be standing next to a, a voice actor in the store and you'd never know it because you don't ever see them. You have no idea what they look like. So you go meet these people, and it's just, they're so much fun. Just great, uh, just great fun to meet these, these people. Well, all, whenever you, if you talk to these people and you learn more about them and you learn who their influences are, most of these people that do voice acting work will point back to one guy. One guy that somehow really, really started that industry it, it, it was probably f- people, uh, w- w- people would say that probably the greatest voice actor ever. Some people call him the man of a thousand voices. And he's a guy by the name of Mel Blank. Now, here's the thing. You, whether you realize it or not, I don't care how old you are, you've heard Mel Blank's voice before. <laughs> Now, I mean, he voiced so many things throughout his career and things that still, you still hear. And when I was a little kid, of course, I became introduced to him, like a lot of people, from Bugs Bunny. Now, what you may not realize, Mel Blanc voiced every character in those Warner Brothers cartoons. I mean, he was Bugs Bunny, he was Daffy Duck, He was Sylvester the Cat. He was Foghorn Leghorn. He was Yosemite Sam. He was Tweety. I mean, he was he was uh, Elmer Fudd. All of it. He played every every character in those shows. And you know, when you're a little kid like me, and I'm watching these shows, you don't realize that all these different characters with all these different voices is just one guy making all these different things. But he wasn't limited to that. I mean, he was. He, he, uh, Barney Rubble. He did Barney Rubble's voice in the Flintstones. You start going down the list on all the different characters that he did throughout the course of his career, and you just be shocked at all the different things that he had done. He was so, so heavily involved with voice acting. 
and again resonates still to this day and people that are voice actors look to him and think he was just as and i tell you one of the things that they'll hear some people talk about that demonstrate how amazing he was was one of the bugs bunny cartoons you know bugs and daffy were were kind of these i don't know they didn't like each other daffy especially didn't like bugs that was kind of just the way these characters were and there was one episode and you'll hear some voice actors talk about this where bugs and daffy were both on the screen together and bugs was dressed up as daffy duck and daffy duck was dressed up as bugs and they were kind of doing impressions of each other now think about the mind scramble that's going on there. Here's Mel Blanc doing the voice of Bugs Bunny doing an impression of Daffy Duck. And he is both characters. So, and so now he's, he's now playing both characters doing impressions of each other. And he's the one that created both these characters in the first. And so you've, he has to con- uh, convincingly <laughs> be Bugs Bunny imitating Daffy Duck. I mean, and he did it. And you go watch this episode and just think, how in the world would somebody possibly do this? Now, uh, y- y- when, we, when I do this show every single day, I call this the thick and mystic moment. And the idea behind this is finding those moments in life or creating those moments in life where you're going this direction and then suddenly you're going this direction. The moments that change you, the moments that either force you to change or the moments that you force yourself to change. And in Mel Blanc's life, he is a, has a perfect example of one of these things where something was forced on him and then he also forced a change in the process. And it's, it's such a beautiful thing and it's, and it's overlooked because, you know, we see on the back end this incredible talent, this massive, truly huge success. But there was something that happened way, way earlier in his life that led to that. And this is the thing that I'm, these are the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Now, of course, he was a class clown when he was a kid, born, born in the early 1900s. I think it was 1908, something like that. Goes goes quite a ways back. And it, he was a, a goof off in school and the, uh, tried to always make people laugh and, you know, doing his, because he would do little voices and things. He was just always really good at it. One of the first things that he did when he started getting, uh, pursuing this as a career is he changed the spelling of his name. His name, when you see him in in credits today, you'd see B-L-A-N-C. His name was actually B-L-A-N-K. But apparently some obnoxious teacher at one point told him that he was going to live up to his last name and be, be a blank and not really accomplish anything. I've talked about this before, the value in forcing yourself to change. And one of the ways to change your identity and and who you are and how you think of yourself literally is to change your name. And he did a very simple thing, just change the way he spelled his name so that he would no longer have that thing tied to him, that word. And he, so he just changed it just slightly. So it was no longer blank. It was blank. Just, it was just a, it was a word that meant nothing rather than a word that meant failure. Now, how much of an impact did that have on his career? I don't know. But it was something that he did, something he realized that he needed to do somehow to change, and it changed his psychology. It certainly changes psychology, those kinds of things too. But that isn't the thing though. In 1932, he went to Hollywood to because he wanted to be he wanted to do this for a living he wanted to do acting he wanted to do voices and he had already done a couple of little things on the radio and he thought well i'm going to go to hollywood and that's where i'm going to be successful he goes to hollywood and for all intents and purposes gets nowhere he, the one thing that happens while he's there is he meets the woman that he would end up 
that he'd end up marrying and they got married and then unable to succeed in Hollywood. He and his wife moved back home to where he's from, which is Portland. And he moved back to Portland after failing to succeed in Hollywood. And what happened when he got back to Portland was he got a job doing a radio show at 11 o'clock at night. And it was going to be called Cobweb and Nuts. They had almost no budget for it. And he had to do everything. He had to produce it. He had to write it. And he had to act in it, do all the voices. And his wife actually did some voices too in this show. And I think they produced this five nights a week. And because they didn't have a budget, it was a shoestring thing. They couldn't afford other actors. You know, in radio, radio back then, now remember, this is like the early depression. This is in the early 1930s, 1933 when this is happening. The, uh, radio productions were these, you know, that you'd have a band, you'd have all these different people, a bunch of microphones, and they'd put on performances and shows. It was a little, you know, it was, it was TV without video. And they'd do these big productions. They didn't have that. Barely had any money to produce this thing, and he had to do everything. And because he couldn't hire any other actors, because they didn't have the budget for it, he created a hundred different characters. Remember, this is a radio show, so it's all, you're just all listening to it. Over the course of the next two years, as he did this radio show at like 11 o'clock at night, I think at one point they made it a little earlier, like 1030 or something, but it was just kind of a throwaway show in the middle of the night. Created a hundred different characters over the course of these two years to make this show work wrote it, produced it, and then did all the different characters and did this five nights a week. After a couple of years, he'd gotten so good at this stuff. He, uh, uh, because his wife encouraged him, went back to Hollywood to give it another go. At this point, it was almost like there's no stopping him. Because he, because of the setback of not making it to Hollywood and getting, having to go back home to Portland and just to see if he could do anything there, goes back to Portland and masters his craft in a less than perfect situation. Where so many people trying to make it in that business are just looking for that big break and they want the big opportunity on the big set with the big productions and the big directors and all the other big actors and this kind of stuff. He didn't get that. He got, go do it yourself. Here's a couple of bucks. Huge setback. And yet it's the thing that made him. So now he goes back to Hollywood and he's got the confidence of, I can do anything. I mean, he's got all this, this mass, all these voices he can do, all these, these skills he's developed because of this big setback. And then he, there's another funny story that goes with it. He goes to Hollywood, gets all these different opportunities, doing all these different shows. Uh, and he, what he really wants to do ultimately is he tries to break into uh, working with Warner Brothers. And apparently he says, according to him, he'd go there every couple of weeks and he'd run into the same guy, the same producer, and they'd say, we don't need anybody else. And Mel would just say, well, just listen to me. And he'd go, we don't need anybody else. And they'd turn him away. And Mel says that he did this over and over and over and over. And believe it or not, this is apparently this really happened. The producer that was running that show, according to Mel Blank, died. <laughs> And, and the, the next guy that replaced him, Mel Blank, continued to go back in. And this new guy, Mel said, I want to I, I wanna audition. I want to show you guys what I can do. And this new guy said, what can you do? And then let Mel show him. And the next thing you know, he is the voice of 
all these characters on the most, some of the most beloved shows and most beloved characters ever created. So look at, look at this. The, the thing that though is so beautiful to me, it's the, the, the persistence of pushing your way into the door, you know, over time and just going back and going back and that relentless persistence and then finally getting into Warner Brothers, the changing your identity in some ways by giving you this new name. But the thing that I love so much is going and trying to make it, quote unquote, and then having to go back home because you can't do it. And then that setback is what forced him in a way that nobody else would have, been, that nothing else could have done, forced him to master his craft. The setback that forced him to master his craft and then become one of the most legendary and all the people that do it today. All these people that play all the characters and all the things, they go, Mel Blanc was the guy. He was the guy. Inspired everybody. Created all these characters. And as a matter of fact, an interesting thing, he was the, apparently the first voice actor to ever get credited for it. Leading to all of it that happens today. All the opportunities that so many other people have had to do that including me, my one little thing that I got to do recently, which was a really fun. All these, all these things that inspired so many people and, and to see that that type of world continues on with all these different characters and all these different people that have these huge careers and that are all credited. And, and it, it, anyway, it's, pretty, it's a pretty neat thing. But to look at somebody who took a setback and turned it into ultimate success. It's, uh, it's an inspiring thing. And it's something that all of us can take to heart. It's interesting how often you'll run into people in the workplace that, I've seen this so many times in my life. Well, they just give me, you know, they really expect me to do this job with just that. I only have this budget. I only have these tools. I only have these resources. I don't even have that. I don't have a staff. I don't have this equipment that I need. I don't have the, you know what? Look at this guy. He gets put back on a late night show and basically says, you don't really have any money to do this. Uh, I need you to put together a show every single night. And he did. And that's what made him one of the things that made him so great. That gave him the capability to do something like I talked about earlier, where his characters actually doing impressions of his characters. Fascinating stuff. Anyway, hopefully that can be something inspiring for all of us to think about that those setbacks and the situations where we're not given everything, where we have to figure it out. Those are good things. Those are good things. Those are great opportunities to become a master at something, to learn the skill, all these other skills. One of the great things about being an entrepreneur. I think everybody should have to go through something like this, starting a business, to have to wear all those different hats and to learn everything and to figure out how to do everything. It's one of those things, especially watch this case right here with Mel Blanc, that ultimately helped him, helped lead him to success by having to wear all the hats and do all the work and not have all the resources and not have all the finances and everything that you need, everything you think you need to be successful and still march forward even when it's not per a perfect situation and make it work. Thank you for joining us on another Thick and Mystic Moment. We hope today's episode has sparked your curiosity and ignited the flames of change within you. Remember, you're not alone on this journey. Stay connected with the Thick and Mystic Moment on all major social media platforms. Please come and share your thoughts with us and share the podcast with your friends and anyone else seeking transformation in their life. This is Robert John Hadfield signing off. And remember, do something different today. Ooh,